Whether you've just had a surgery or you just cut or scraped your skin, scarring is a normal healing process. But there are ways shown in new research that can help speed up the healing process while decreasing the visible sight of the scars and avoiding that thick or bound down skin or scarring. For those of you who are new here, my name is Kelly and I am a physical therapist and I have seen thousands of individuals and patients come through the doors after their surgeries or even after their radiation. So I have seen what works well to get rid of scarring and what doesn't. And in this video, I'm going to share with you the proven ways to help heal your skin fast while decreasing that visible site of the scar and that thick tissue. So if someone just had the surgery or just scraped or cut themselves, the first thing we wanna do is make sure that we keep it clean to avoid any infections. Someone needs to allow the skin to fully close after surgery or a deep cut, following the surgeon or the doctor's instruction until the skin is closed. Once the skin is fully closed or you just had it scraped, the next thing to focus on is keeping the area moisturized. One can use petroleum jelly or Vaseline on the area to keep the moisture on there. However, there's research studies showing that things like vitamin E oil, as well as silicone gel or even silicone sheets can be really effective in decreasing scarring. These all do a great job of creating a moisturized barrier over the incision or over the scar, and that can help decrease the amount of scabbing and the dryness that occurs. Scabs are going to take a lot longer to heal and they are going to create a thickened tissue. There's going to be more and more scar tissue to the area and that is when you see older scars and you see it raised up. That's because that scar tissue has built up over time. By using a moisturized barrier over this area, you can help decrease the amount of thickness that can occur. If you have a lot of dryness in the area, then you run the risk of having skin breakdown, which can open back up the skin. So applying a moisturized base over the area a couple times a day is going to be the most ideal. When looking for a silicone based gel or sheet or a vitamin E oil, we encourage to avoid anything with a lot of extra ingredients or fillers because a lot of those things can dry out or irritate the skin. As well as avoiding things like perfumes or a lot of alcohols in it, that can also dry out the skin and cause more skin breakdown. You can talk to your doctor and see if you can get a prescription-based vitamin E or silicone-based, or if clear to use, I will place links down below for different options of silicone gel or vitamin E oil that we find most helpful. For those who have had radiation, such as for cancer treatment, there are some new studies showing that those who take vitamin E as well as pentoxivalin can help reduce the radiation fibrosis, which is kind of like that scar tissue. And so you can also look at talking to your doctor about using a vitamin E oil on the radiated area site to help decrease that fibrosis or that thickened tissue. Again, someone should look to avoid a lot of the extra perfumes and chemicals, especially over that radiated area, but I will place some links down below for those best options. So as the skin heals, it's fully closed and it's well moisturized. Once you're cleared by your doctor, then you can start trying something like scar tissue massage. Scar tissue massage can really help decrease the thickening of a scar while helping to improve the mobility and pliability of your skin and the surrounding tissue. I have created a more in-depth video on scar massage with different tools and techniques for all the layers of the skin, and I'll place a link for that down below or up above here if you wanna check that out. But I am gonna show you my favorite one or two in this video. First, I always recommend someone follow up with a physical therapist or a massage therapist that specializes that can help show the specific technique for an individual. But the most common technique that we use in the clinic is something like tissue rolling. So what we typically do, I'm gonna show you on my arm, is we wanna think about picking the skin up from the tissue that it may be bound down on underneath. So a lot of times when the scars are there, they're really hard to pick up or pinch because there's so much scar tissue underneath that's holding them down. And that's gonna create that thickness, that's gonna create the tightness, and sometimes for some pain. And so what we wanna do our best to do is try to pick up the skin that's around that scar. So whether it's on your knee or on your chest or you had an abdominal surgery, you wanna spend some time just trying to do what we call tissue rolling, where I'll try to 
pick it up or pinch it and then kind of roll over the skin. That can really help break up that scar tissue, pull apart those scar threads, and then soften the area. Usually we'll spend about two to three minutes at a time, up to maybe five minutes max, working on an area. And you wanna start really gentle, which is why I usually have everyone follow up with the therapist first, because you wanna start on the top layers and work your way in. And again, I should go more in depth on that in the other video. The other technique that I typically teach a lot to my patients is using some sort of tool. So if I'm working on someone's scar tissue in the clinic and we're having a hard time picking up the skin because it's just so bound down or so tight and thick, then we'll have to use something to suction it up, kind of like a cupping technique. So there are a lot of different options online depending on what the person needs, we'll direct them to the right thing. These are the most commonly used type, something that's handheld so it's easy to use. And when you place it against your skin, you can help suction the skin away from whatever's bound down. And so, you know, the skin is not scarred, so it's a lot easier, you can see it lift up. But if someone has that thickened area of that scar tissue, we usually will start on the outsides of the scar or the ends of the incision area and work our way in, because usually they're a little bit more pliable on the sides. Usually we'll spend about two to five minutes or so on each area, working gently inwards. And for some, it can take a couple of weeks. Sometimes it takes a little bit longer, but the tissue will start to soften really well. And you'll also get a lot more blood flow to the area when you start to work on it, which can help heal the tissue. We always encourage someone to start out really gentle and avoid any sort of pain or irritation. We'll start usually from the outsides of the scar like we talked about before, but also from the top layers of the skin before we work any deeper. Again, I go more in depth on this and the various layers in the other video, but be sure to check with your physical therapist or your doctor for steps for you. Lastly, if we want to avoid the visible signs of the scar, we want to make sure that you're constantly using your sunscreen. Along with the vitamin E and the silicone, which can help with the healing process, using sunscreen each day is going to help avoid the sun from making that scar darker. When looking for a sunscreen, you want to look for something with an SPF of 30 or above, and typically we'll look for something that has zinc oxide in it. I will use this Badger one a lot because I think it does a great job with that zinc oxide, but you can find name brand ones as well. I will place links down below for various options. Sunscreen should be put on daily, even if someone doesn't plan on being outside. It is a great habit to get into, but it's especially important for that first year or two after the surgery or after the cut to avoid that darkening right away. By putting on sunscreen and wearing some sort of clothing over that scar area, that can really help decrease that darkening of that scar. So to review, we want to make sure that we keep the area clean and allow the skin to fully heal, as well as use moisturizer to the area to speed up the healing process. By using the moisturizer, such as the vitamin E and the silicone, as well as the scar tissue massage, that can help soften the thickening of that scar tissue. And by using sunscreen with the vitamin E and the silicone, it can help decrease the visible darkening of the scar. As always, we wanna make sure we encourage everyone to follow up with their doctor if they have a deep cut or any signs of infection, as well as if they have a cut or an incision that is not healing after a week or two. And again, all of this information is education on what we most typically use in the clinic, but each person's going to be different. So everyone should follow up with their doctor or their physical therapist to find what works best specifically for you. If you found this video helpful, please let me know and press the like button and subscribe for weekly new videos. Thanks everyone.